this is the agenda for today. Um, uh, I'll be uh, walking you through our uh, company profile just to have a glance at, at what we do and the services that we provide. Then uh, my colleague Meher, uh, who's the uh, senior technical consultant, uh, will, will be with you to explore more how Microsoft Teams can be uh, of great value for your productivity and uh, especially in, in, in such uh, a time where business continuity is something that we need to do utilizing uh, technology and uh, digital transformation. <clears throat> then uh, my colleague Radir, who is responsible for uh, our product uh, bubbles for uh, chatbot and live chat, will take you through a discussion on how this can be helpful for er your organization and a demo as well. And then Meher again will uh, be talking about the uh, WVD and how you can utilize it uh, for your remote uh, desktop connectivity. And then, as I told you, we'll have a 10 minutes at the end for your questions, and I, we will be able to answer all uh, your questions that you may have. Um, so we'll start with link development at a glance. Uh, I will just highlight who we are, uh, what we do, and how we do it, uh, since uh, maybe some of you may not be uh, aware of link development. And then we will talk about our solutions catalog uh, in a brief. Um, so, uh, Link Development, we are a global technology and solution uh, provider, uh, and we, we are leaders in the digitization of the private and public sector. Uh, yani since we started uh, more than 23 years ago, uh, we started with solutions and digitization for the public sector in specific, and then we, we stretched uh, to serve uh, other multiple industries. Um, we are more than 600 employees. We serve uh, the market at large globally uh, through our offices. We have two offices in, in Egypt, one office in Dubai, uh, another one in Riyadh in Saudi, and uh, the last one in Italy in Rome. And we have footprint across uh, the globe through our uh, offices. Uh, we operate in more than 25, uh, 24 countries. Uh, and we have a great ecosystem of partners uh, between business and technology partners, just to make sure that we are providing the right solutions uh, to our uh, customers, uh, utilizing the different technologies and the dif different business uh, partners. Um, we, we provide services uh, on site and offshore, and we have outsourcing models as well. Uh, we, we try to fit our customers' needs through, through the different models. Uh, we have a dedicated team for R&D uh, and the creation of uh, IPs and products to serve the market. Uh, and since we started 23 years ago, we've been partners to Microsoft, uh, a gold partner with uh, multiple and many competences, where here you can see a sample of these competences across the different workloads. Um, and we've been nominated and uh, winners for different uh, also uh, um, awards from Microsoft. In, in the for, for the cloud per or per country, or even for Microsoft Dynamics, which is a Microsoft CRM solution. Uh, as I told you, we've been working with the governments across uh, the region uh, for more than 23 years ago. So this is our uh, focus. We also, we also uh, serve healthcare, telco, um, banking, real estate, tourism, retail, and aviation. And I will be sharing with you uh, uh, the presentation sample of our customers and references in these different uh, industries. Um, here we're just highlighting our footprint. So as I told you, we, we, we are, uh, our HQ is in Egypt, Cairo, and we have uh, these offices which are in green. So Egypt, uh, Saudi, UAE, and Rome. Uh, and we serve customers across the globe. So we have customers already in, in the different uh, regions. So Africa, um, Asia, Europe, and Canada. Uh, what we do, the services that we provide is we do consultation, development, implementation, and uh, technology solutions for our customers. Um, and this, this uh, slide will summarize what we, what we exactly do. So we, we deliver digital transformation and we utilize technologies, solutions, or services to provide this. 
And we have dedicated business units inside our organization to, to deliver this in the best shape. So these are samples of the technologies that we provide. We, we, we do um, Dynamics 365, which is Microsoft CRM and ERP. Uh, we, we, have, we, we work on open source solutions, mobility, analytics, artificial intelligence, um, IoT, any emerging new technology. And of course, we support the cloud uh, across uh, the road. Um, regarding the solutions, we, based on our uh, big portfolio of solutions that we delivered to our customers uh, for 23 years ago, uh, we packaged these solutions and we tried to serve uh, our customers with, with both the business and the technology that we have and the experience we gained from all of this. And we deliver industry-specific platforms to, to serve uh, each industry utilizing the technology and the business experience that we have. We have products and applications and we develop accelerators to, to facilitate and speed up the, uh, the implementations uh, across the different technologies that we work on. We have uh, four business units inside our, our organization. Uh, and a business unit which is uh, focused on the digital services. This is mainly all aspects of development uh, like mobility, analytics, uh, open source development, uh, portals, uh, and different platforms. We have a business solutions business unit, which is focused only on the CRM and ERP. And we, of course, we are talking Microsoft CRM and ERP, which is called Dynamics 365. We have a business unit for the infrastructure, and this is to support our implementations. So our customers may, will not worry about the, the hosting or the managed services around our solutions. And of course, we provide the outsourcing uh, service as well, since we have uh, a big pool of, of uh, trained resources and certified resources, which our customers may be interested to utilize them in their projects. Um, these are examples of the services that we provide. So we do consultancy, implementation, development, uh, customization on, on different platforms. We de deliver managed services, integrations, as I told you, infrastructure and hosting, and of course, support and training for all uh, the solution services that we provide. And at the end, we do, of course, the off offshore and onshore uh, models for supporting our customers. This is in brief what clean development uh, do. Uh, how we do it? Uh, this, is, uh, this is a great slide that summarizes the experience, the full experience of uh, the digital journey that we provide for our customers. So we start by the strategy. So I start, we're starting the road with the strategy where we define and plan for what the customer needs to, to deliver the target that he needs by benchmarking um, and uh, the strategy uh, for his roadmap. Uh, and the digital experience uh, guidelines, which will be utilized later on uh, across the road to deliver the digital, digitization required. Uh, and then we move for the experience where we start the design and enhancement of the different channels that uh, he would utilize. So we do the omni-channel solution. We do uh, self-service and customer uh, service uh, mobility solutions. We utilize the emerging technologies and the augmented reality to enhance the experience for, for the customers of our customer. Uh, and then we start with the transformation, which is mainly the automation of the business processes at the, uh, the customer side, so that this will speed up and enhance the business processes inside the organization. We do uh, enterprise integration, we utilize smart services, internet of things, all the all the services that will help in streamlining the business processes. Uh, afterwards, we start the optimization by monitoring what, what have been done through analytics and insights, uh, digital marketing, and then and capturing impressions where we can um, identify the, the, uh, the good points and bad points and we start optimizing again through maybe optimizing starting from the experience or in the transformation till we start to till we reach the best optimization level for the, our customer. So we help our customer from the start till the end throughout these different stages. Uh, while in development, mainly uh, because of the 
strong ecosystem that we have in the methodologies we apply in our uh, work, uh, the in-house skills that we have, and the, num the great number of resources that we have, the partners ecosystem that we uh, also have varying between partners uh, on a regional level or on a global level. And of course, uh, by the customers and the experience that we had with our, with our customers for 25 years and the awards that we, uh, we gained uh, across all of this uh, experience. So I will not go through the details of our methodologies. I just want to highlight that we uh, are agile. Uh, we utilize Scrum framework, and this helps uh, to deliver the, uh, our solutions in the best way and uh, optimizing the time for delivery as well. Um, also, we use DevOps, which is continuously automating the development cycle. Uh, and this uh, can help us to absorb as, as many changes as the customer may have and, again, deliver services in the best shape. Um, we have um, diversity of in-house skill sets, uh, varying from front-end, back-end, mobility, databases, um, uh, solution testing, uh, anal analysis. So we have a great diversity of skill sets in-house uh, in link development. Uh, these are actually sample only of our technology partners. Of course, we are proud to be Microsoft uh, Gold partner uh, for 23 years now. Uh, we also are partners with Informatica, K2, Sidecore, OutSystems, uh, LifeRay, um, the three uh, global uh, RPA uh, or robotic process automation vendors, uh, Automation Anywhere, UiPath and Blue Prism, IdeaScale. Um, so actually, these are our partners uh, with different solutions or platforms which we utilize to deliver a bigger solution for our customers. And these, of course, are all global partners for, for link development. Uh, this is a loaded slide a little bit. However, this, also, uh, this is a sample of our customers across the region. Uh, so they vary from uh, global uh, customers like Italia Online in Italy, uh, Wind in Italy, uh, Central Bank of Nigeria. We did the e-government uh, for uh, the government of Mauritius. Um, we have telco operators like Orange, Vodafone, STC in Saudi. Uh, we work with the real estate like Orascom Development in Egypt, uh, the Talat Mustafa Group. Um, we work with retail like El Arabi, IKEA in Saudi and in Bahrain. Um, government like we, we already did the a lot of the digitization in the Grand Museum in Egypt. Um, of course, a lot of government, uh, the Ministry of Investment in Egypt, uh, uh, government of Dubai in UAE. Um, actually, uh, a lot in Saudi we have uh, Gaka Munshaet. Uh, Ministry of Labor and Social Development. A lot of, actually, a lot of, of uh, customers. Uh, of course, most of them are in the government and public sector uh, industry. And we have also, uh, thank God, uh, a lot of big, great customers across the different uh, industries. These are sample of our awards and recognitions. So we have a lot, apparently, a lot of awards from Microsoft. And we also have other uh, awards from other uh, entities. Uh, this uh, Amadeus is, of course, the reservation system for the most of the airlines across the world. And we got uh, also uh, an award for the mobile achievement that we did with Egypt Air in Egypt. Uh, and we have uh, a lot of other uh, awards throughout the years. Um, for the solutions that we, the solution catalog that we have, uh, we have solutions across uh, the different business units that are in link development. For, for example, for the business solutions, which I told you, which is focusing only on the CRM, the customer relationship management system, we deliver a um, CRM strategy for our customer utilizing CRM. We deliver platforms on top of the CRM to, to serve different uh, industries. So for example, on top of the CRM, we can deliver citizen management system, uh, justice management, call center management, etc. cetera. Um, we also deliver applications or apps on top of uh, the CRM. 
for the different uh, departments that may, uh, may be in any of our customers. So we do sales management, marketing, customer care, field service, etc. cetera. Uh, and of course, we deliver ERP platforms uh, for our uh, customers related to financials, trade and logistics, retail, project accounting. So this is in business solutions. For the digital services, which I told you is related to all the development aspect that may uh, occur. So we also deliver digital strategy for our customers and we deliver uh, customer experience as well. So we work on enhancing the, cost, the user experience for our customers, customer, customers. And uh, we deliver business transformation by, auto, by doing automation and uh, uh, integrations, utilizing uh, emerging technologies, uh, machine learning, AI. And at the end, we do business optimization through the uh, business intelligence, digital marketing, uh, big data and customer insights, which help in the optimization of the business. Uh, the infrastructure business unit uh, delivers different uh, solutions, like also the workplace transformation for the employees. We do data center modernization as well for customers who, who are still on-prem uh, on and having um, their, their uh, applications hosted in a data center. Uh, we do operations optimization, uh, like delivering a service uh, management, uh, IT operations management, service desk management for our customers. Uh, we do cloud transformation, uh, utilizing uh, different solutions to help our customers migrate to the cloud and utilize it as much as possible. And we also deliver unified communications uh, like call center implementations uh, from end to end, uh, voice system migration, uh, instant messaging. And this is where we will be talking today maybe about Microsoft Teams. And at the end, we, we deliver outsourcing uh, service. So we have different models for outsourcing. We have dedicated teams, we have uh, um, a different engagement model, managed or unmanaged employees, so that the customer may be managing his resources at our end, or will be managing them on his behalf. <clears throat> and of course, we support both the on-site and the offshore models of outsourcing. And this is in brief uh, link development at a glance, and then I will be uh, leaving the floor to Meher, our senior technical consultant, to take you through Microsoft Teams and how it can be uh, a great tool to uh, increase the productivity of your organization. Um, just before uh, yani handing this to Meher, I just want to, to highlight here um, the different pillars for digital transformation, which are engaging your customers, empowering your employees, optimizing your operations, and then transforming your products and services. And what we'll be talking about today actually falls across the different pillars of digital transformation. So we have the chatbot and live chat, which will definitely help in engaging with your customers and transforming your products and services. Uh, while Microsoft Teams and Microsoft WVD will help you in empowering your employees and optimizing your operations. So we are trying to provide solutions and services for you to be uh, to fit across the different pillars of digital transformation. Um, so I will leave you now to Meher. Meher, uh, can you share your screen? Absolutely. Thank you very much, Marwa. Thank you, Meher. Uh, thank you, everybody, for your time. Good morning. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's start with uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, okay. What we're going to do, actually, we're going to move through uh, the. I'm sure maybe most of you have either used or uh, have seen Teams uh, somewhere in your organization or perhaps in other organizations. So I won't take long from your time. Uh, we're going just to. Uh, show where we stand today as Microsoft Team application helping your uh, teamwork perform their tasks specifically in the current circumstances where we are asked to have social distancing and work uh, far away from each other as possible. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually walk you through where do we stand and then uh, as mentioned in the agenda we're going to have a quick demo uh, stressing on the new features that we have on Teams. 
uh, let's move uh, forward uh, and at last we will see how the strategy of uh, Microsoft and link development is built around to support your uh, business uh, at all costs. So here, uh, as we might all know, uh, Microsoft Teams is actually an application and a, it's actually a platform that helps you communicate, collaborate with your team members, whether inside or outside your organization uh, on over uh, cross uh, platforms. Uh, you can use you can use it over uh, your desktop application, uh, mobile, any browser uh, or tablet. Yeah, even Mac also, of course, is supported. Now, when it comes to numbers, it's good to share uh, how Microsoft Teams is doing globally. Uh, as you can see in this slide, we have we are supporting 39 languages. We have we are have we have presence in one, 181 markets. And this slide actually was generated in 2018, and we can see there is a jump in organizations using uh, Microsoft Teams from 200,000 organization to 500,000 organization being. Uh, Yeah, thank you, Esther. Yeah, I think uh, this this way my my presentation seems to be uh, more clear. So uh, once more, we have a jump and increase in the number of organizations using Teams. Uh, this has been giving us uh, very strong uh, uh, feedback from different segments, whether it's public uh, uh, service, uh, healthcare, retail, um, Microsoft Teams is actually gathering all the feedback from these. Uh, big segments of markets and uh, uh, putting this into mind. And as we will see now, we will see all the new features that are actually coming from the user voice and inherited in the new version of, uh, of Teams. Now we have 13 million plus active users on Microsoft Teams globally. Uh, we can see that Slack is one of our major competitors. We are moving ahead of Slack right now. Maybe some of you are already using Slack uh, today. One point to highlight here, and this is probably one of the major benefits of being on the cloud is you're always on the latest version. You don't need to wait for the latest version to be released. Any new feature, anything that you'll ask for in the user voice, you just need to, uh, the user voice is actually a platform where end users of, of any Office uh, 365 or any uh, Microsoft application can go and suggest new features or actually complain about some shortages that they have and they would like to have it uh, implemented in their in, in the in the tool that they are using. So this gives you uh, uh, some sort of a step forward uh, you're always on the latest version, you're always secured, you're always patched, you're in a cloud solution. As we all know, these benefits are going to be uh, in hand. Now, uh, coming to this slide, uh, which actually uh, hover over the uh, new features that we have on Teams, I think it's about uh, the right time to show you a quick look about what we were talking about. As we agreed, we'll have a quick demo. Uh, showing the, cap the main capabilities of uh, Microsoft Teams. For those who didn't use Teams before, this is how the platform will look like. You will have this navigation panel on the left, which starts with this build sign, activities, chat, Teams, calendar, calls, files, and so on. And uh, uh, just a quick overview uh, on them. Here you will have anything that specifically uh, was meant to be delivered to you. So you need to be aware of someone mentioned you someone sent a direct message to you you'll be able to find it in this under this tab the chat uh, as marwa introduced this is the uh, instant messaging uh, feature that is provided by teams you can chat with anyone in your organization and the good part is that it's already integrated with your address book so you'll be able to see everybody in organization real quick you just need to type the first letters of his name and if you even hover over the contact here on the picture, you can see all the contact details of that person. And moreover, if you click on the view organization here, this is one of the very interesting icons that we get very positive feedback from many of our customers about. Um, it shows you the organization structure and where does that person, where does that colleague of yours stands? Where, uh, who is his manager, uh, who reports to him, and, and so on and so forth. So this helps you a lot in when you are actually communicating with your team. And by the way, all of these information don't, do not need any efforts from your end. They are actually 
gathered from your Active Directory. You do not to you do not need to hard code any of these uh, uh, setups to get to get you up and running and to get all this valuable information uh, at your fingertips. Moreover, you can see also all the features here, or the these uh, purple icons that you can see on the left top, uh, oh, sorry, on the right top corner. You can immediately start a video call with that colleague of yours, or uh, an audio call, or you can share your screen as we, as we are doing right here. Uh, moreover, let's uh, let's say that I have started a chat with Nabil here. He's my manager, and here I want to highlight a very cool feature that has been introduced recently, which is this icon that you can see here. It's a uh, it says pop up uh, pop out chat. If you click on it, this is what you're going to have. You're going to have uh, a smaller uh, only that window of that chat box that you are actually interested to. I don't need to uh, be seeing the entire platform of Teams. Might be a bigger screen here. So this is good for multitasking. I'm working on something else. I'm working on my presentation here on the back end. I can focus only on that chat box between me and my uh, colleague Nabil. Moreover, I can start adding people to that chat real quick here. I can again search on my address book. I'll find more people here and I can add them. So that means we have now a one to many chat, not only uh, one chat. Uh, one of the good features also about teams that actually uh, emphasize and encourage connectivity and reachability for your team members and collaboration. Let's say that Nabil now is out of uh, away from his machine. Probably he's not connected even to teams. He's offline. So yet I can send him a, a message and um, after some time, if he's not still connected, this time is configurable. I can configure it from my profile, from my account. He will be able to actually he will receive an email message notifying him that I was trying to reach out for him or team. You can see also the status that this is the, the, the thing that we're used to in uh, the previous version of Teams, which is Sky for Business and even before that. It, show you the it shows you the status because Namil now is with us in this meeting, so he is in a call. I can even by just moving the cursor, I can see that he's in a call because it's showing this red dot. If he's available, of course, it's shown in green and so on and so forth. I'm sorry if I'm sharing information that is already known by some of you, but we're just making sure that everybody uh, uh, is on the same page. Now, uh, what else? If uh, speaking about this connectivity, one of the new features now if i get disconnected of course i will not be able to demo that right now because if i got disconnected i would be kicked out of the meeting but let's say that for some reason you got you lost the internet connection one of the uh, nice features that has been introduced recently is that you'll be able to see all the the, the recent history of of these chats that took place either one to one and also inside your teams you'll be able to see all the recent activity so it's like cached on your machine so you can get back to those very important, very recent uh, uh, communications that took place even if you are offline. Now, one of the things also that we might highlight is pinning your contacts here or the chats that has took place earlier. As you can see, once I click on any of these chats and I choose to pin it, now I can unpin it as well. Uh, if I scroll up and down, these two chat boxes, these two conversations that took place will always be on the top because they form some sort of a priority to me, so I need them to always be uh, right in front of the uh, or right on top of my list. Uh, now, coming back to this icon, we have, of course, to 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 go to this because this says Teams, which actually stands for the application or the platform uh, name. Here you can create multiple teams. Uh, uh, I'm sure probably many of you have seen that you can simply uh, create or join a team and by just create it by, by just creating on this icon here you can be navigated or, or taking through a very simple step where you can create a team that in, includes all the team members that you like to have in that team. Uh, afterwards, as we all know, or as most of us might know, we, this team will be able to work together collaboratively. They will be able to share files, have video calls, audio calls, uh, consider like a certain department working together or a certain team working together on, on a single project. It will be very useful for them to have uh, such a, a tool in their hand, in their disposal to uh, make sure that everything is being done uh, the right way 
all the information related to that project or that task or that department is in one place. You will have permissions control. You can have um, admins on that team. Uh, uh, you can have certain changes uh, that you can do on that team. I don't want to exhaust my 15 minutes going through, but if we have enough time, if you have questions at the Q&A, maybe we can go into more details. But there are some new features here related to this that I would like to highlight. And if you allow me to get back to my slide real quick here, there are some numbers that are really interesting here. Now you can see that the teammates have, have increased actually uh, in terms of numbers. It used to be 5,000. Now you can have up to 10,000 teammates. Now we're introducing teams to public sector, to health sector. We're introducing teams to organizations that actually have uh, more employees, more power for more uh, 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 task force uh, at their disposal. So we're looking at bigger numbers uh, as well as the chat. Uh, before we used to uh, support or actually teams used to support up to 100 uh, for a single uh, chat. Now it can jump up to, I'm sorry, I jumped to the other slide here. Let me just go back. It can support up to uh, 250 participants. OK, now what else do we have? Uh, one of the very interesting features as well is the number of. Um, okay, just having a little lag here. So coming back to the video here, as you can see, or to our meeting, before Teams used to support, if you remember, or if you're using Teams earlier, it used to support up to six boxes here, where if you have six people or let's say 100 people joining the same meeting and they're trying to communicate with each other, if each one of them is having his camera on, it used to support up to six uh, participants uh, uh, showing themselves uh, um, as being presented over the, behind their cameras. Now this has increased up to nine. So if nine of us now or, or even more than that, we will have a limited number of nine, which is actually three by three, which is three times more than the supported uh, number that we had uh, earlier. Of course, uh, speaking about the integrations that we always have, Microsoft always thinks or always, always drive their solution to be integrated with everything else that you're using from the from Microsoft ecosystem. It's fully integrated with your calendar. Uh, however, if you we, we're always mentioning the features that uh, that assumes that you are using Office 365 platforms. Let's say that you are using you're, you're hosting your exchange online. In that case, there's some sort of integration that you need to do because Teams actually, as we all know, is a cloud solution built on Office 365. So the more products you inherit from Office 365, the more integrated and the more features you'll be introduced to. However, that's not uh, uh, the only uh, way through. You still, if you have your exchange on-prem, we still can, can do some sort of configuration. It's called a hybrid setup in order for you to integrate your on-prem calendar um, uh, with Teams. Very important also to highlight that that does not mean you are moving any of your mailboxes or any of your data to Office 365. That's completely optional. However, you still have can you still uh, can have the feature of uh, that sort of integration. Coming back to the calls icon here real quick, we can see all of your uh, contacts here again. You can search again for the contacts and here we're talking about natively voice over IP calls. I can reduce the bills of my calls, for instance, significantly. I can have the flexibility of having this voice over IP application as we mentioned in, the, in our first slide. Uh, you can have teams installed on your mobile. You can do uh, absolutely almost all these functionalities can be done from your mobile, sharing your screen, having video or audio calls. However, that's not where it stops. Yet you can integrate this entire uh, voice over IP calling uh, infrastructure with your on-prem uh, infrastructure, meaning that you have your on-prem uh, PBX, your on-prem, for instance, Cisco systems, you can fully integrate it with Teams, meaning that at the end of the day, end users will be able to root calls or make calls between their disk phones, the extensions that are actually laying on their desks, towards uh, people who are using the, the soft phone, which is actually Teams. I've been trying to make this in 15 minutes. I was always looking at my stopwatch. I couldn't make it. <laughs> There's a lot to talk about when it comes to Teams. Uh, so I will just uh, move faster, not to take from my colleague time. So back to the slides here, just two uh, 
actually a few more slides that I need to highlight before closing. So here we have the meeting options, one of the very cool new features. When you, have, when you are the organizer of the team, you can just click on this one and you'll be introduced to some of the options that you can predefine before people are coming into your teams. For example, you can have uh, the behavior of people uh, logging into your team when it comes to the lobby. The lobby is actually the place where people are joining the team before it's, uh, sorry, joining the meeting before it starts. So here you can uh, uh, choose from these uh, multiple options right here. How do you want that meeting uh, behave once you uh, once you start it and once participants starting to join it? And it's also very important to highlight or to remind everybody that there is nothing that necessitates having Microsoft Teams licenses when you are sending a team uh, meeting to someone outside the organization. As you can see now, we're having this meeting uh, uh, held on team platform. Uh, I'm sure at least some of you might not have Teams uh, li licenses yet. You can use it over the browser uh, or um, or any other um, uh, uh, platform that we have mentioned earlier. Now I will skip this slide because I need to move uh, a little uh, quicker. Here we are talking about the communication through calling. This is what I have quickly highlighted that you can integrate your on-prem uh, telephone system with Teams. Uh, here I'm talking about the ecosystem. It's not only Teams. Once you go to the cloud, once you go to Office 365, you will find yourself having so many tools. Some of them you might not even uh, uh, knew about earlier, and you will find that you have an opportunity to utilize these tools to best help your business uh, move in the way that you want it to move. Now, strategically, as I mentioned, Microsoft is your strategic partner, as we all know. So uh, that putting it, being put into action, we want to highlight the uh, COVID-19 offer that might some of you might already be aware of. Uh, this is an offer where you can have E1 licenses. E1 is one of the common plans of Office 65, which includes Teams as well as other very uh, essential services. We can have it for free. Link development from your partner side. We are uh, uh, we are actually happy to say that uh, we are one of 200 partners all over the world are uh, considered to be fast track partners. What we mean by fast track, we don't only present a solution for you. We don't also, we don't only provide the licenses for you. We make sure that whatever we have proposed for you actually works. So we work hand in hand with your uh, uh, organization in order to come up with a rollout, uh, complete rollout plan. As you can as you can see here, we uh, we gather the stakeholders, we prioritize the business scenarios, complete technical planning. We take you through the entire journey to have and as well as continue adoption and success as measurement to make sure that people are actually utilizing the tool. This is completely free of charge because we are, again, a fast track partner. You don't need to invest uh, in this. Uh, uh, at the end of the day, our target is to make sure that your, your teams, your organization is utilizing the application in the best way possible. Uh, by this, I will wrap up my first presentation. I would like to thank you very much for uh, being patient with me for this uh, uh, 15 minutes. Now let's get back to the agenda real quick. Just to remind you, we're about now to start uh, with my colleague Radir. Uh, she's going to talk for another 15 minutes about the uh, chat box uh, or the sorry, the chat bot. Our one of our you know uh, brands that we would like to present uh, to you. Uh, once more, thank you very much for your time, and uh, I will leave it to Radir. Thank you, Mehir. <clears throat> Uh, good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, like based on where you're seeing us. I'm going to start sharing my screen now. Just let me know when you can see it. Um, you can see my screen, right? Yes, we do. OK. So um, today we're going to talk about uh, chatbots. Um, what are chatbots? How do they work? Um, 
uh, why government agencies need chatbots and uh, we're going to talk more in depth about bubbles uh, link developments product and then we're going to show a demo um, so to start off with what is a chatbot uh, basically chatbots are computer programs that simulate human like conversations with um, your customers or citizens or patients or employees like depending on the chatbot application you're going to use um, chatbots are increasingly helping uh, the private sector um, and now it's the time to actually start talking about how we can use chatbots to improve the, um, the communication between government and citizens through artificial intelligence. So um, artificial intelligence and machine learning in a chatbot um, allow the chatbot to actually teach itself through the questions it answers and everything. Like, let's say now we have a chatbot and um, you, you trained your chatbot to answer some questions and um, each user speaks differently. Like every person speaks differently. So the bot needs to understand this language. And in order for it to understand it, it uses machine learning and AI to provide the most relevant answer to users questions. Uh, moreover, in chatbots, you can give your chatbots the uh, your knowledge base or like your handbook in order for the, the chatbot to learn from it and uh, answer customers' uh, inquiries. How does a chatbot work? I'm not going to get too technical here because like I know it gets uh, boring. But um, yeah, so basically how it works is that the user formulates their queries in natural language. So let's say you want to ask a chatbot about like how you can renew your driver's license. So you're just going to go in and be like, I want to renew my my driver's license. Um, the chatbot takes this request and uh, its engines interpret it in order for the chatbot to understand it because at the end of the day, it's not human, it's it's still a machine. Um, so it, it, it takes out the, uh, the the query, it, it, it starts breaking it down. So you said, I want to, uh, renew my driver's license. Now it knows that you're asking about the driver's license. Renewal. So it's going to give you the, the answer that, that relates to your query. And um, of course, this answer is going to be unique and qualified um, for your specific answer. If it doesn't do that, then it doesn't do its job. Um, we're going to move on to um, why would you invest in a chatbot? Because um, <clears throat> first of all, chatbots don't have working hours. They don't take uh, coffee breaks. Uh, they're not like a, a typical employee. They work 24-7. And um, to give your customers all the answers they need and to provide instant communication around the clock. Um, moreover, in the, in the region, chatbots are not being completely utilized. Um, so you have a chance to be an early adopter and that really, really uh, hits in with your customers that love technology or like um, younger generations that are just used to uh, everything being quick. Um, another benefit of having a chatbot is that it's like having an employee except you, you completely um, control every way that says like, it um, you train your bot on specific scripts to ensure your prospects or your citizens never get outdated, outdated or misleading information, which is a great uh, feature for these days because everything is very rapidly changing and uh, people need to be updated on what's happening um, around the clock. Um, Another thing now, chatbots are extremely clever now with the use of, as we said, machine learning and AI. Chatbots are able to identify your users' intents and um, <clears throat> uh, their personalities. They're able to give them the answers they're actually looking for without any frustration. Um, and uh, definitely chatbots are uh, inexpensive in the way that they cost less than apps. They, uh, they provide the answers that you need and give the user experience that you need in a, with a very uh, low cost. Okay, so now we're going to talk more in depth about why government agencies need uh, chatbots. 
So basically, we all know that one of the biggest um, challenges um, that uh, government websites have is that you're never able to find the information you lo you're looking for. This could be either for taxes reasons, like, um, sorry, for um, keyword reasons, like not the not all the average citizens are able to know the, the legal language that is used on the uh, government websites. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes the search feature on the website does not work because um, of the said reason, like the the you might not be able to compose your your search query in a way that is put on the website. So it it create like it creates an obstacle for people to find um, public data on government websites. Um, also, another another uh, complaint or another challenge that government entities face is that they have limited working hours, which um, creates an obstacle for the citizen in a way that um, <clears throat> they're, not, they're unable to, to submit their requests uh, around the day. So chatbots come in here and allow the citizens uh, or users to submit their requests online. And these requests are then taken and stored in a, in a database uh, that integrates with the system that the, the government entity uses. So in this, and like, the second case is that bots allow um, working hours to be more. The third thing is that chatbots can be programmed in any language. So let's say <clears throat> in most, in most um, Arab countries, people speak English and Arabic. Um, and uh, a lot of uh, citizens require assistance in Arabic or in English. Uh, so in this way, like you can, instead of hiring two different um, uh, employees to take care of English speaking people and Arabic speaking people, you can have just the chatbot to cater to both uh, um, demographics. Um, and uh, as we said, like uh, the um, government websites in general are hard to navigate. So chatbots make it uh, mobile friendly because you can just like go in and ask the chatbot about your inquiry and the chatbots can answer you that you having to go through the hassle of navigating through the website and uh, going through multiple menus, clicking multiple icons. You can just ask and you will get your answer instantly. Um, here we can, um, we will, I'll just go through like a couple of these uh, applications that chatbots can be used uh, within governments. So for all entities, um, chatbots can be used as virtual enterprise uh, assistants. Um, they can enhance the productivity and efficiency of government employees. This is uh, mostly done through, let's say um, you work in a government entity and you need um, help from IT department or from HR department. Uh, your most, most queries in, uh, in IT department and HR departments are repeated or frequently asked. So um, this way you can just um, train your bot to answer the frequently asked questions, uh, to answer the employees in terms of IT and HR. Um, this way you save IT and HR personnel's time and you give your, your, um, your employees their answers straight away. It can also be used in smart cities to um, to take um, for in order for like citizens to submit their their uh, complaints or or suggestions, and this helps officials um, uh, create their strat their strategies accordingly. And in education, universities can create a virtual student assistant that can help. Uh, with their emails or like queries or like how to uh, get their their results stuff like that this is actually the demo we're going to be showing later on today it's a demo that we created for an egyptian university uh, yeah and then like it can be used for motor vehicle departments for licenses electricity and water economic development tourism and many more other government agencies um, so what is the benefit that a chatbot actually has? What are the, the 
results that you're going to be able to see straight away. First of all, it reduces email communications by around 50%. Like when people go to talk to a chatbot and they get their answer, they don't need to, uh, to communicate through emails anymore, which saves times, time for the employees that have to answer these emails and it saves time for the citizens who are trying to get their answers. Um, it increases the government's limited working hours, as we mentioned. Um, mm -hmm. So this way, it, it creates a better user experience in general. And it reduces long waiting times um, where you have to go to an ent to, to a government entity and like finish paperwork or like get, get things done. So basically, like chatbots are essential, especially during these times, because they provide communication without the contamination of the virus. So you can just be safe and get what you want done done um okay so like um the chatbot that we have at link development is called bubbles bubbles chat um and it's a great product to be honest i'm not just saying that because because i i take care of the product but honestly like based on like um the competitors and everything bubble stands out in these specific um areas so first of all bubbles has a very very strong and smooth back end um it uh, it gives you full control over uh what you can do it um it's comprehensive it's a one-stop shop basically to manage all your bot and live chat related tasks um and um I talked a lot about uh, chatbots but we also have the human handover feature which which allows Basically, the chatbot takes your user on a journey until it can no longer answer questions based on its training and everything. And in this case, a human agent is required to to close that ticket or like close that inquiry. And in, um, in Bubbles, as a chatbot, we have the human handover feature, which allows the bot, which allows the human user to. Um, to jump into the conversation and uh, talk to the to the to the user. Uh, additionally, we have Arabic support. Bubbles uh, supports Arabic. It understands Arabic with uh, NLP, and uh, it can uh, it can it allows you to connect with your Arabic speaking customers in their mother tongue, which creates um, sort of like a bond <clears throat> between you and your customer. Um, of course, Bubbles is powered by Link Development. Um, as we introduced Link Development, there we're, we've been in the market since 1996. We ensure your solution is supported by more than 600 employees, which is also a point that um, that uh, differentiates Bubbles from its competitors. Is that it's uh, it takes a village to to has to have it up, you know, and. Uh, the most attractive feature of Bubbles is that it integrates with WhatsApp, with uh, Facebook Messenger, with T Microsoft Teams, uh, can integrate with your CRM. Um, <clears throat> so it's it's uh, readily available for integration. And uh, also it requires no coding um, for you to build your chatbot. So overall, it's a great solution. Um, where where the, this is a list of our a sample of our customers. Uh, we created the uh, chatbot for Bank Mosque. It's uh, the one on WhatsApp. They created a campaign about it in Ramadan. Uh, also, Ali ABK in Kuwait, uh, TRA in Emirat, um, Dubai Healthcare City in uh, Emirat, and uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs in uh, UAE as well. Um, okay, now we'll, we'll have to talk a bit about the technical aspect of it so basically i'm, I'm going to try to make this as simple as possible uh, basically what we have here on the left side is that the users can communicate with the with the with the framework uh, through any of the channels uh, whether it's facebook website microsoft teams whatsapp um, so the the user the, there are three modes of um, of the chatbot there is the faqs which is basically free text as in the user goes in and types in his um, his query and the bot searches its uh, knowledge base in order to find an, S, an answer the second part the second module or mode or model 
it's uh it's the dynamic dialogue so basically when the user starts the when the user clicks the bot uh, button it takes the bot initiates the conversation and takes the user in a preset scenario with preset um, choices that the user can choose from and um, <clears throat> and uh, in order to find its, his answer and uh, there's also the ai powered bot which is um the which which allows the bot to understand what the user is saying and uh, uh, extract his intent and uh, related with entities it's a whole story <laughs> and um, uh, finally we have the bubbles live chat which um, which requires human operators to operate it but if the if the user goes through all the three phases and his answer is not uh, presented to him yet he can choose to talk to a human agent uh, in order to be supported better um, of course the the chatbot is built on microsoft bot platform and and this is all about bubbles communication framework in this slide, I was just uh, gonna explain what I just explained, so we're just gonna skip that. Um, okay, so we use uh, cognitive services for the bot. Uh, we have vision services which recognize the face for like video chats, um, with speech, uh, speech services which um, provide the speech to text or, uh, or text to speech and voice recognition. We have language. Um, basically, language allows your app to process natural language with pre-built scripts. So natural language, as I said, um, when a user goes in and types in a query and the bot has to find an answer to it, even if it hasn't ever seen it before, if it hasn't seen the query before, it will be able to kind of answer it. If, um, yeah. And uh, the search, it uses Bing. Uh, search and it can be integrated with other APIs as well. And uh, there is, and as for the knowledge, there is a Q&A maker and that identify entities and intents as we mentioned before. So these are basically the chatbot cognitive services that can be integrated with Bubbles. Uh, there are two hosting options for Bubbles. There is the on-prem implementation and the on-cloud implementation. Uh, they both have their ups and, they they both have their benefits. Uh, On-prem implementation um, allows the entity to have the bot and the live chat on their uh, dedicated and on cloud. Um, you can the entity that has it can have it on cloud. This way, it's uh, easier to to have um, updates rolled out. And it's just fast and it doesn't require as much uh, memory and servers and all this. So this is it for the presentation. I'm going to take you right ahead and uh, yeah, to the demo. Uh, thank you, mm -hmm. Radir. I just want to, uh, uh, to ask everybody on the call uh, if they can have 15 more minutes with us, because actually we are a bit delayed. So Radir now will take you through the uh, demo of Bubbles, the live chat and chatbot uh, solution. And then Meher will take us through the uh, WVD. And this will be uh, the end of our uh, webinar. Uh, of course, if anyone has to leave uh, right now, we are ready to answer his question. If not, we, we shall proceed. Okay, I guess we're we're good. So Radir, please. Okay. Um, <clears throat> all right. So this is the uh, the the solution we created for Benha University, which is a university in Egypt. Um, it's in Arabic, so I'm going to be translating everything. So basically, when you when you click on the button, it asks you for your name. I'm going to go ahead and say Radir. Okay. Uh, 
uh, here the chatbot starts the conversation with a welcome message. It says, hello, like, how is everything? Um, and then it, uh, it, it prompts the user to choose uh, their question from the below choices. So the first choice we have is what, whether they want to know the, um, their, their university email or their email, um, their, their university um, emails password or the, if they can contact them or the, if they have other questions. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and this this uh, box um, shows us the dynamic dialogue uh, option that I talked about in the in the presentation. So the user can is is the conversation is controlled by the bot. The bot gives the user the choices for the user to choose from. So you are gonna go ahead and say that let's say I'm a student who doesn't know their password. So I'm just gonna say I don't know my password. So uh, the bot asks a follow-up question, which is, um, have you tried to log in with your national ID? So I'm going to go ahead and say yes. Um, here it says, did you try to write your, the unified uh, password of your university? I'm going to say no. It's going to show me a list of um, answers of, uh, sorry, faculties that I choose from in order to get my uh, password. So I'm just gonna choose anyone here. And then it just shows me the password. This way we can see that um, <clears throat> the bots, um, the bot create, like answered my question. We can go here and say, I have other questions. And then it asked me to type in an, a question. Um, this bot is not trained to answer questions like that, but I'm just going to go and show you what happens when a bot doesn't know the answer to a question. Here I asked, I asked, uh, I said to the bot that I, I need to submit my essay. It says, doesn't know what I'm talking about. Do I want to send to support? Yes, I want to send to support. It's asking me about my number. I'm just going to give it any number. Okay, so here it, it just, um, confirms that this is the request you sent and then you confirm and that's it. Um, so that's about it. Um, I didn't get the chance to show you the live chat and the, um, the other options that we have in the bot because we're short on time, but I would be more than happy to um, assess requests uh, after the call. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, hand the floor to Meher again to go ahead with the... So thank you, Radir. Um, I just want to encourage everybody on the call to try to visit bubbles.cc, uh, the website for bubbles, and maybe take a free trial to check all the features yourselves. And uh, of course, we are here anytime to answer any questions you may have. Um, thank you, Meher. Perfect. Thank you very much, everybody. And uh, here we are. We are almost done. We are the last uh, 15 minutes of our uh, presentation here. Uh, and just another uh, recap. We're going to talk about WVD, Windows, uh, virtual, uh, Windows Virtual Desktop. And I will jump into the presentation uh, right away. Okay, so we are talking about WVD, it's uh, Windows Virtual Desktop, and we will go through uh, the details of that and how it differs from the traditional, the traditional version of it. As some of us might uh, know, we used to have uh, a hype uh, about 10 plus years ago, it was VDI, Virtual Desktop Infrastructure, 
the main concept of the VDI, for those who don't know, is actually uh, being able to move uh, your business data and your environment from the end users' devices to your data center. So at the end of the day, to put this to put this in simple words, you're basically uh, your end users are actually using screens to access the data and the operating system. Everything is actually under your control, under your data center, and uh, at your disposal. So uh, there is no comparison on the level of control, um, agility, uh, security that uh, actually uh, being uh, in place while doing this approach. Not to mention the BOYD, the bring your own device uh, approach that we will discuss, and it's actually uh, very uh, became very mandatory. Now people are working away from home, as we know. Uh, sorry, away from offices, and they are probably on the run. Uh, it's 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 a very good tool to adapt to the circumstances that we are having right now. However, it's also good to mention, based on this screen that we have here or this uh, slide, uh, I hope you all uh, can see it, is. Uh, the VDI has a lot of components for it to run. You can see here, this is your data center, for instance, and it has some components like the gateway connection broker. It has the database, the, the, the virtualization host, the session host, the web access, and, and so on and so forth. So uh, if you ask me, yes, there was a challenge having all this setup being built in your data center. Uh, many of the big organizations, specifically in the public sector, have been doing this. Uh, I'm sure some of you might have been uh, there because uh, it's it's really becomes, it shows how it, it's beneficial uh, when it comes to big number of end users. Because at the end of the day, uh, a lot of users means more uh, efforts that needs to be spent on in each and every aspect, security, um, control, manageability, and, and so on and so forth. Now, this is the new version, let's say, for VDI. This is WVD. This is where you are actually disengaging yourself from all the heavy load that used to take place on your data center, providing such a huge environment to support and to uh, provide this uh, uh, the VDI or now WVD uh, algorithm or technical uh, technicalities. Now everything is actually hosted on, on Azure. The infrastructure, the core infrastructure that was actually uh, a painful area for those who are actually interested or actually uh, deploying and even managing the system has been moved to the cloud. And not only that, in order for you to set up such an environment, you can do it literally in a few hours or sometimes even a few minutes, depending on the size of that environment. So you have disengaged yourself from all the time consuming work at the same time you have been able to build maintain and deploy huge infrastructure in very short time not only that uh, also we're not saying that there's only it's a it's only a, a one-way ticket you still have the ability to connect your on-prem data center because we can see in the left bottom corner here we have your on-premise servers they are still integrated, fully integrated and fully connected to the environment on the cloud. So we call this also one of the hybrid scenarios that we have where you split your data center. It doesn't have to be completely on the cloud, doesn't have to be completely on premise, though it can be either way. But for, 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 for flexibility and agility uh, purposes, you have this option where you can host your VDI infrastructure, probably some of the servers or some of the services that requires to be yet maintained on-prem, that is also supported. Now, uh, let's talk into some more details about what we are providing here. There is a specific version of Windows that has been built to support WVD on the cloud. It's called Windows 10 multi session And as we will see in a bit of detail in the later slide, this is simply allowing users, uh, uh, actually many of the users, which this is actually a concept that was there on, on server levels. Now we're bringing that concept to Windows 10 uh, desktops to reduce cost and complexity and to increase the end user application supportability. So simply, what does it do? It allows many users to access the 
same virtual machine, which is actually a Windows desktop multi-session machine, and do the work uh, uh, on the same machine simultaneously. This, as you can see, provides a lot of flexibility, reduces the footprint of the virtual machines you have, reduces also the, the footprint of the backend systems that you need and the, the amount of uh, horsepower on your CPU and everything else, the resources that you're utilizing for those users to do their jobs. Now we can also see here, this is one of the points that I have mentioned already, enable optimization for Microsoft 365 apps for enterprise because you're using a Windows 10 multi-session machine here, you're not, Windows, a Windows, you're not using a Windows Server machine as it used to be earlier. So you have better supportability specifically for Office 65 apps like OneNote and uh, etc. You can migrate the Windows Server remote desktop and apps to Azure. You can also do that because we always consider going to the cloud as you are creating that virtual box and you stop moving gradually. It doesn't have to be uh, one step because we understand the size of your organization uh, won't allow you in many cases to take one step towards the cloud and move everything one shot. So what we do is we create that box and we start moving some of the elements that you have, probably some of the critical business critical applications, some of the things that you want to have up and running all the time and you want to disengage yourself from the infrastructure burdens that you are having already today on your data center. Uh, moreover, you can, uh, as mentioned earlier, also you can deploy and uh, scale in minutes. You can have these, uh, this environment built as we will see also in the coming slides, you can have a number of virtual machines in tens or in hundreds of virtual machines being provisioned to end users and ready to use in a few minutes. Just imagine if you want to prepare this amount of machines or this amount of client PCs or laptops or desktops for the users as hardware. It will take much uh, uh, longer for you uh, to accomplish that. Now in this slide, you can see a, a, a better version of what is for you to take care of, what are the controls that you have, and what is being shifted away from your shoulder and being taken care of Microsoft Azure. Azure is, of course, the infrastructure as a service and platform as a service uh, uh, platform that Microsoft provides to many of the customers. We were talking about Teams. It's, it's, it's one of the SaaS uh, components, software as a service. Now we're talking about Azure, which is your data center on the cloud. By the way, it's also very important to highlight that when we talk about Azure, we're not only talking about Microsoft products. Azure is a platform that supports any other products like third party firewalls. It supports Linux and, and, and so on. So on the left side, you see that you have control over your. Uh, um, you, first of all, you have the desktop and apps box where you have these desktops available for you. Uh, again, we talked about the Windows 10 Enterprise uh, multi-session. We have the uh, also the uh, um, native Windows 10 Enterprise version. Uh, the supported servers operating systems are Windows 2012 R2 and above. And also one of the uh, uh, good things and probably one of the motivators that motivates some of our clients to go to uh, WVD is the Windows 7 Enterprise, Windows 7 Enterprise uh, full desktop. Now we know that Windows 7 is uh, running out of support now. It's, it's, it's considered to be a legacy operating system. Uh, however, if you go to WVD, one of the good features or one of the good benefits that you gain is that you will have up to three years of security uh, support and security patching for those operating systems. So you might have applications or uh, some of the users at your end are still Windows, Windows 7, using Windows 7. Some of the applications are still uh, not supporting newer versions. You can consider that as one way to solve this issue at your end. Moving to uh, <clears throat> uh, the, bo the box under this or beneath it and on the left side as well, you still have the control, you still have the management, you still have the policies that you want to customize and build based on your security best practices or based on your security and policies requirement. You can have uh, an image or uh, app and profile management, of course, an, an OS image that is customized based on your requirement. It doesn't, you, you are not only limited to those images that already predefined on Azure, you can build your own image and upload it to Azure and use it over there. You can also have user management and identity. Uh, that's the integration. We're talking here about the integration between Azure Active Directory and your Active Directory. That's a, um, a full integration that uh, uh, 
makes the user use uh, an approach at least called single identity. So users don't have to manage two user accounts. OK, so user uh, density, VM sizing and scaling policies. Uh, one of the, flex the flexibility that we might all know about is uh, you can do scaling up, scaling down at any time uh, you, very simply, and you can even automate that. That's absolutely not possible when we talk about your on-prem data center. In many cases, it could be hard. Even if you're using a virtual a virtualization environment, yet you are dependent on this hardware, those hosts are, uh, that you are using on-prem. So probably if you want to scale up or scale um, uh, uh, or increase the host power that you have, you might need also to think about investing more in that hardware that you need to maintain and you have to support, you have, you need to have the support contracts for and you need to refresh after a certain period of time when they are actually depreciated. Network policies is also no difference. Now when it comes to the other part, I'm sorry if I took uh, longer in this slide, but it's important for you to understand how the entire mechanism works. I'll try to move faster and here we're talking about Azure uh, components. Uh, in the first box, we, we will see the components that we talked about earlier in the first slide. These are actually the components that uh, WVD runs on top of the clients, the broker, the gateway management, diagnostics, and load balancing. And we will probably uh, describe more about what the load balancing role is for here. And at the bottom of it, you will have the Azure infrastructure. You don't need to manage, you, need to, you don't need to have all these workloads running on your data center. They will be running on Azure infrastructure. Now, what are the benefits? Just to cut it short, what I'm gaining when I go to WVD approach, specifically now when we're talking about people who are actually uh, asked to work away from the office, including the IT people. Now, we see in some organizations, everybody will be sitting at home, yet the, the IT department will be forced to be in office to manage their own data center. Yes, I know some of you will say, okay, we have VPN connectivity. That's true. You can connect your data center using VPN, but that's not always the case. Sometimes you need to have physical presence because you have the burden of taking care of these this data center in terms of cooling, physical security, and all this uh, has that the technical people will uh, surely know about. So first of all, we have the flexibility, as we have mentioned earlier. You can downsize, you can, incre you can increase the size of your environment based on your needs in, in very few minutes, and that will also impact on the cost, specifically if you're going to an Azure Pay as you grow subscription, where you pay only for the amount of uh, services and the, amount, and the sizes of the uh, resources that you are using. So you, you have a very, very tremendous uh, flexibility. We talked about the Windows 10 Enterprise Multi-Session, which is only available under WVD program or, or technology. We also talked about a Windows 10 security updates for another few years. Uh, the bring your own device, yeah, that, that metaphor that we used to use for many years ago. Now uh, uh, it became mandatory for many organizations. Now we have many requests from customers saying that, okay, people are working from home. I need to have more... Uh, control, I need to have more monitoring tools to see are they really working from home or not? Are they really doing the job that I'm asking that I've asked them for? Now people working from home also emphasizes that they don't have the machines that I have provided them. They might be using the personal laptops which I have no idea about. It might be infected, it might be outdated, it might be a cracked version of an operating system. Now WVD could be definitely uh, taking it away from all these uh, uh, problematic scenarios. Uh, you don't care about the security, everything, the data, the operating system, everything related to your corporate or to your uh, uh, business is actually hosted and controlled by you on your own data center. The same experience, uh, end users will never um, uh, uh, feel any differences working on any application or any virtual desktop that has been provided uh, to them using WVD. He will see his profile, specifically if it's a VM to user approach, he will see everything similar to what he used to see uh, using his traditional uh, machine. Data will follow the user. Uh, that's one of the very good benefits. So you don't need to worry about data being hosted on the client machine anymore. 
wherever you access the environment, you will have that profile loaded for you and your data will be mapped into it. The virtualized application, the Azure AD uh, MFA, one of the very good uh, features that you can have, the multi-factor authentication. So while when the users are actually accessing the environment, they could be challenged for another password that could be uh, as a text message to their mobile, a phone call, or even an application that installed that has been installed earlier. Uh, my 15 minutes are gone again, so I will I will move faster with the coming flu sli uh, few slides. Uh, just to wrap up on the models that we have when it comes to WVD, we have three main models. Um, uh, this is the first model. This is where you have a dedicated VM for each user. It's not the most recommended model because it's resource consuming, but at the end of the day, in some cases, you might need for specific users to for them to have their own VM uh, always only dedicated for them. Uh, it will be dedicated for them. It will be booked for them all the time. Uh, no one will be able to access except those users. Here we're talking about the multi-session model that we have also explained earlier where many of the users are, are using the same resource. We're talking about Windows 10 multi-session for, for instance. And this is very good even when we talk about shift workers uh, environment you can see as per this picture there are three people who are already connected there are other four people who are not connected to the same vm necessarily right now because probably this is not their shift or they don't need to work on this vm right now so again you're saving the resources uh, of your environment now probably the most beneficial or the most uh, recommended approach is the host pools this is where you have as you can see in the first triangle you have multiple machines in the same pool right So the benefit here is that you can control these machines uh, 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 as a single identity, as a single entity. You can update those. For example, you have a, win, a batch, an important security batch that you need to install. You have a, uh, an application that you need to deploy. Uh, you don't need to go and deploy this on each and every virtual machine that you have. You are managing the entire pool as a, cert, as, as a single uh, object. You can push that update, you can push that application to the entire pool. The, the entire VMs will take the, uh, the required changes and it, and it will be uh, ready for the end users to use. Mostly also we can talk about the load balancing here where you can have uh, those VMs load balance. So only uh, the free machines will take requests coming from new users and this will give better experience and more, let's say, um, um, uh, better experience and more uh, resource utilization when it comes to your environment. Uh, once more, thank you very much for your time. I think we're done now. We have finally reached to uh, our Q&A session. If anyone would like to ask any question, we're more than happy to listen to your questions and answer them real quick. So uh, Marwa, I think uh, if you can hear me, I think we doesn't seem like we have uh, questions related to our session. Uh, can we wrap up and close? Yes, of course. Uh, so uh, thank you everyone for uh, your time uh, and your interest in our webinar. We hope uh, what we shared with you will be of uh, great value for you and your organization and business. Uh, you can always uh, reach, uh, reach to us. Um, th we will be sending you actually an email to thank you and give you a channel to communicate with us if needed. And if you ever have any questions regarding uh, what we shared today, we'll be uh, happy to, uh, to know your questions and answer them uh, and support you in the best way we can. So thank you again, and um, I hope you have a great day. Thank you, Marwa. Thank you, everybody. And uh, hope you all have a great day as well.